packed athletics agenda this afternoon, but it won't feature double world and double Olympic champion Mo Farah. He has pulled out, citing emotional exhaustion. He's had a difficult week after that Panorama program featured allegations of doping surrounding his coach, Alberto Salazar. And we're going to get a full reaction from Steve Cram and Paula Radcliffe a little bit later. But first of all, here's the full story of the week that was with Phil Jones. After years of success, facing the press is nothing new for Mo Farah, but not under these circumstances. My reputation is getting ruined. Um, for you guys, it's just, you're killing me. It's like, what have I done? Farah's press conference on the eve of today's meeting would ordinarily, and quite simply, have been about his anticipated part in today's 1500 was. One of the world's best-known athletics coaches is at the centre of doping allegations. Among the claims is that Alberto Salazar was involved in doping Galen Rupp, the American long-distance runner. Both Rupp and Great Britain's Mo Farah are part of Salazar's training base in Oregon. Now, there's no suggestion that Mo Farah has broken any rules. The response was swift and categorical. Salazar stating, I believe in a clean sport and hard work, and so do my athletes. Apparently, that is not interesting enough for some. Galen Rupp, who trains with Farah and finished second to him over 10,000 metres at the London Olympics, said, I'm dedicated to clean sport and have worked extremely hard for every accomplishment in my running career. I expressly told these reporters that these allegations were not true. That is inexcusable, irresponsible journalism. I spoke to Alberto last night and um, I got on the phone and I said to him, Alberto, um, what's going on? And I said to him, I need some answers. He goes, Mo, I can prove this to you. Uh, these are just allegations. Uh, I'll show you some evidence. Um, and I said, OK. UK Athletics also wants answers. It's a governing body at pains to point out it oversees all of Farah's training regime, including at Salazar's Nike Oregon project in the US. The UKA statement read, whilst acknowledging the gravity of the allegations, UK Athletics can confirm it has had absolutely no concerns over the conduct and coaching methods of Alberto Salazar in relation to Mo Farah or in his role as an endurance consultant. But UKA says it views allegations made about non-British athletes who've been coached by Salazar with utmost seriousness. And we are taking this ridiculously seriously. Um, Mo's had the conversations with Alberto. I've had conversations with Alberto. We're taking it seriously. Alberto has uh, allegations to answer. We are expecting uh, quick responses. I'm not leaving Alberto uh, for the reason that I've not seen any clear evidence. Um, I need answers. I want him to prove it to me. These things are just allegations. Uh, if he can't prove this to me, then I'm out. Alberto swears to us that the responses are going to demonstrate that he has nothing to answer to. That's what we're expecting. And um, if that's what we get, then obviously we move forwards collectively together. If there is any doubt, Mo has already said, and British athletics, absolutely without question, we will end the working relationship as soon as there is any proven doubt. There have been some very serious allegations made, um, not about Mo or about his involvement with uh, Alberto's involvement with British athletics, but historical allegations and allegations with non-British athletes. He has to give the answers about the others, and we haven't said unequivocally about that. We're waiting for those answers, and I think that's the right thing to do. The easy decision would have been to say, let's walk away, but the right decision is to say, you have to prove that these allegations are not founded. If you can't prove that, we will walk away. The difficult thing for Farah is finding himself in unwelcome headlines merely by association, something a fellow British Olympic champion here in Birmingham views as unjust. For Mo, it, it's the hardest thing in the world is going to be the fact that, I mean, first of all, we don't know if, if any of these problems have ever happened with Alberto. So if they haven't, he's never seen anything and nothing's ever been untoward. All of a sudden, people are pointing fingers. And for the athlete and for the coach as well, that's incredibly unfair. Um, but what I do hope that comes from all of this is that it's fully investigated properly. People get all of the facts and if they find that there has been any cheating and anything gone wrong, then absolutely you've got to throw the book at people. While Rutherford acknowledges a sense of injustice, Farah is living it and it shows. I'm really angry at this situation. Um, it's not fair, it's not right, um, yet I haven't done anything but my name's getting dragged through the, through the mud.
It's like if you guys here have something on me, yes, bring it. And I'm happy to share anything that you want to know. Uh, but it's not about me, so please. It's about Alberto. I was coming on a flight and there was a lady, she's flicking through the newspaper and, and I'm seeing my pictures and I'm like, but yeah, everything is about picture Mo. So you guys are just, you know, dragging. I just feel like my name is getting dragged through the mud and it's just, it's not, I haven't done anything. It's about Alberto, let's ask Alberto. Um, but yet, yeah. and that's why I'm angry. I'm so angry at this. Well, he did seem angry, emotional and exacerbated yesterday. And so perhaps no surprise then this morning that this statement was released. It's been a very stressful week. It's taken a lot out of him, he says, and he wants to focus on his build up to the World Athletics Championships in Beijing. So he's gone back to the USA to look for answers and get back into training. And he apologizes profusely to everyone who's bought tickets for today, who've uh, expected to come here and watch him race. And I guess that together with his press conference yesterday shows somebody Steve Cram, who is feeling, you know, at his kind of wit's end. You know, he didn't, he, I've never heard him speak how he did yesterday. Actually. He was very, very emotional. What have you made of, of both yesterday and his decision to pull out today? Yeah, I thought, as you said, it was a bit of an outpouring of, of frustration and, and I'm sure a bit of confusion from Mo. I think, you know, there's a lot being said about the allegations and that they're not about Mo Farah, but of course they're intrinsically linked to Mo Farah. And so that's how he sees it. He feels as though, you know, people are against him. And you saw that yesterday. And he came out, you know, on the front foot, really, and said, I'm angry, I'm frustrated. And, and I thought he did very well. But he should have been here today. Because I think he could have moved the story on today by getting it back to athletics. And, you know, the people in this stadium would have loved to have seen him, would have given him a good reception. I think would have made him feel better. Um, you know, sometimes when you're in a room full of the world's media, it can, you can feel very isolated. He would have been more loved here. And I think it would have been the right thing to do. I can understand it. You know, he's tired. He's, he's emotionally upset. But we wouldn't have minded if he'd come here and got beat today. I don't think the spectators would have minded that. They would have... Yeah, yesterday him, seemed like the hard thing, didn't it? And today would be his happy place. Paula, there'll be people saying, well, would he not be better advised or would he not be better to make the decision to just put some daylight between him and Alberto Salazar? You know, he's gone back to the US. People assume to go and, uh, you know, back to the, the, the project there in Oregon to start training again with him just until things calm down and we get some answers out of Alberto Salazar that perhaps he should make some distance. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very difficult decision. There is a huge bond of trust between the athlete and the coach. So they're close. As we saw in the clip there, um, Galen said that he expressly told these journalists there was no truth to the allegations. So he and Alberto obviously had commented on s in some way, knew some way about these allegations, probably already reassured Mo that there was nothing there, which might have been why he was so taken aback, I think, by, by the reaction um, and maybe by the fact that the pro program was actually aired. And I think first thing he would do is go and be 100% sure that there's, there's no basis, no truth to the allegations. He's been with Alberto for what, 2011, five years. So in that time, he, by his reaction, he obviously has never seen anything. Um, totally believes that Alberto is 100% innocent in this case. Otherwise, I don't think he would be standing there. So I think he's, he's kind of taken a step back in that he's saying he's gonna go back ask more questions, um, really find out, see the evidence that Alberto has or claims to have, um, and then make a decision from there. I think that's probably the right one, I think. Um, but of course, it's UKA as well who, who have got to you know, make a decision about their relationship, and they have. They've said they've got no problem with him coaching Mo, but they still have then put a committee forward to go and investigate. So should they not perhaps also pull yeah, I back? find that a little bit strange. I mean, I, th I, th I, I, I fully... Uh, I think support and understand that you know, they are expecting, I think we are all expecting a fairly robust defense of all of the allegations from Alberto Salazar in the next couple of days. They are party to that defense. They're comfortable at this point that they don't need to sever ties. So I'm not quite sure what the investigation is uh, on this side of the pond is going to produce. I think Alberto will answer the questions himself um, in the next few days. Uh, and in, in a lot of detail, that's what we're expecting. And, and I think at that point, then, obviously, that, that information will be in the public domain and UK Athletics will, will, will respond. Um, so I'm not quite sure how that committee is going to get any answers. Can that, you that, just, that, and you that say you there. expect Alberta to give us answers. Yes. Can you tell us what that will look like? Because anybody can stand up well, and say, know. it's not true, Governor. So what, you yeah. know, what, what do you expect him to be able to produce? Okay. <laughs> Alberto Salazar is um, a meticulous 
coach, a meticulous person. He's a detailed person. It's what's made him the person people want to go to, why Mo Farah went there. He's quirky. At times, um, he does things which people kind of raise an eyebrow and go, why on earth are you doing that? But, you know, from a coaching point of view. And he, one thing I do know about Alberto, he has, over the years, has kept records. He's, he, he's you know, he, he knows and understands the worlds he lives in. So I, I would hope and expect that if he is to refute those allegations, he has to have evidence to do that. Um, and that will be the next stage in all of this. Um, you know, some of those allegations were historical, um, so it may well be that you know he, he may not have that information. I don't know, but yeah, we are in a, a holding pattern almost with this now. Mo's gone home. You know, he'll have conversations, I'm sure, with Alberto, but he's been having them all the time. Uh, but the next phase of this sits with Alberto Salazar. Can you can you tell us kind of what Mo gets out of? this relationship you know it's, I suppose it's quite difficult for people who don't have a coach to understand how that relationship works and what and what he gets you say he's quirky but what does Mo get out of him and what has he to to move his performance on as he said he has you know he went out there to move from an athlete who was finishing sixth and seventh to, to win gold medals so how does that happen um, well I mean obviously the coaching relationship works because Mo's taken a big step up since he joined Alberto's group um, and I think like Steve says Alberto's attention to the small details the little things particularly um, the strength and conditioning guy that Alberto uses out in Oregon I think has played a big role in um, really making sure that Mo's core strength and um, balance and things is, is really really good um, so that certainly helped I think Alberto gives his athletes a lot of confidence too um, and that's self-confidence, so they, they go on then and perform well. Uh, a lot of support around that. Um, yeah, I mean, I but the project isn't some kind of mysterious thing. Anybody can drive in and see what goes on there. It's very I've, I've uh, just been there. transparent. You know, I've been there with, uh, with some of our athletes up in Park City. Mo was there training. Um, you know, we were there last year as well. It's that this relationship that we're trying to cultivate to get some benefit for British endurance. And I've been trying to learn and watch. And you know, Alberto and that setup have driven a lot of practices in the, it, that have been adopted by us in the UK and in other countries around how to train endurance athletes. Um, particularly around altitude training. So, you know, the, 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 there's no secrets there. I've, I've read some stuff about, you know, Fort Knox and you can't penetrate it. It's absolute nonsense. Um, so there's no secrets there. And I think, you know, that they've, Alberto certainly is, is one of those people, as often most of us are coaches, you want to sit down and have a coffee or a beer with him, he'll talk about everything they're doing to the nth degree. Sometimes it'll bore the pants off you. But he sails close to the wind sometimes. I, I think that's one way of putting it. If you mean by that, you know, he's always looking for ways to push things forward. He was like that as an athlete. He ran himself almost, he almost mm. killed himself. He would push and push and push and push. And of course, we all expect people like that to push within the rules. But this is a sport which is fraught with people who've you know, tried to push Sports. barriers and then occasionally have stepped over. You know, what we desperately hope, and you know, uh, uh, certainly I have a reasonable amount of confidence in this case, that's not what he's done. And it's, uh, it's important to stress as well that it's just Mo Farah that he has a contract with in terms of UK athletics. No, well, no, there's, uh, he's acting as a, as a as consultant, consultant. But just for Mo, there's the no other British program. athletes that he's this, He doesn't have any direct coaching relationship with any other athletes, no. But we have spent time, I've, you know, I've known Alberto since 1980. Yeah. You, you mentioned very briefly in, the, in your opening answer that you know he should be here today. This is his yeah. arena. This is what what he loves doing, being on that track out there, enjoying the adoration of an athletics crowd that really appreciate him. Because sometimes it, it, he does appear to not feel appreciated. What kind of damage do you think it will do for him to be flying back to America today and not being here to his reputation? Um, well, I mean, first of all, like he, he said there, his reputation sadly has already been damaged, has already been tarnished. People will not forget this. Um, even if all of the allegations are later refuted, they won't forget that. For Galen as well, um, back in, in the US, the same thing. So um, his, dam his reputation is already damaged, but I, I agree with Steve. Had he come here today, even if he'd said, I, everybody understands that he's emotionally and physically drained, he has to be after everything he's gone through. So he wouldn't have run at his best. But he could have run, or he could have even just come and just watched and just walked around and just been here to, um, to yeah, to, to show to the, to the fans here, the people who came to watch him. Yes, I'm here, and yes, I have 100% confidence that these allegations 
are unfounded and that's why I'm standing here today. And, and in a week's time, we may well have evidence from Alberto Salazar that they are unfounded, but it comes within this summer and um, comes within a period of athletics, unfortunately, being tarnished by other drug stories. And Justin Gatlin is currently a man twice banned, is currently running in the form of his life, saying that he can run 9-6 by the end of the season, which is very close to a world record. And that, again, just adds, doesn't it, weight to the argument of those who say, ban these guys for life, don't give them a chance to come back and win medals on the world stage. Yeah, let's let's let's. If we're talking about Justin Gatlin, then then yeah. yes, I'd agree with you. And I mean, I, th but I think that's what I'm saying. People, yeah. you know, I'm not. These right. Obviously, they're not two linked stories, but it's just yeah. within that umbrella of drug stories. Yeah. And, and, I, and and you're right. It's hard for the sport. This is this is not good for the sport. The whole episode has not been good. Um, it may turn out to be a lot of, you know, there's nothing uh, of substance in there. Nothing might happen, as I said. But the, but the the all of the headlines have not been good headlines for the sport. The only good thing about it, in my view, is that our sport is. We do question ourselves a lot, and I think a lot more than other sports do. And we question ourselves publicly, and we'll criticize. I'm, I'm talking about athletes and coaches internally. We'll always question each other. You know, these allegations have actually come from athletes and people within that mm, system. That's true, yeah. Not really from journalists. They come from people who are there. So uh, I, I don't mind that. I think that's a good thing for our sport. Some other sports tend to kind of, you know, have in the past have closed ranks. So we will always continue to do that. We'll always look at each other with some suspicion. Um, and we need to carry on doing that. But also, we need to try and find some good stories as well, which I hope we'll get today. Absolutely. And, and it's ironic, isn't it? Because it's the, the appeal of athletics is its simplicity. And, and that is the beauty of the sport. But it also is the area that people perhaps can, can exploit. So as you say, there are some good stories. There are going to be some good stories this afternoon. And, and what better story than Jessica Ennis-Hill getting back into action in a heptathlon, which she did last weekend in Gotsitz, which is kind of the unofficial World Heptathlon Championship. So it's the first full heptathlon that she's competed in uh, since the birth of her son almost a year ago. And of course, since her gold medal winning performance in London in 2012. Who better to go and watch her than our own golden girl, 2000 Olympic champion,